Hi, uh, welcome back to part two of this tutorial on UEFN modeling mode. Uh, if you didn't see part one, uh, you should see a pop-up over top of your video. You can go back and watch that. In this uh, video, I'm going to continue on with using modeling tools in modeling mode, not to do creative stuff yet, but to fix up imported assets. So last time I processed this bunny mesh. Uh, this time I'm going to use this more complex mesh, this gearbox.glb file. That's a um, a GLTF binary. I'm just going to drag that in. That's the kind of file you might find on the internet. Uh, the import dialog is going to come up. I'm going to check uh, one box in here um, because this mesh will also, like last time, import as a bunch of pieces and I showed you how to fix that but also uh, you can have the importer do it. If you click the static mesh box here and check combine static meshes, it's going to combine all those parts. Um, and I would like it to do that just so that I don't have to do it. So now I'm going to click import. This is going to take about 30 seconds because this is a really big uh, bunch of meshes. And uh, so I'm just going to fast forward through that. Okay, and we're back. Uh, now you see this made a whole bunch of files. Most of these are materials uh, because this mesh has a lot of materials on it. And we're going to deal with that later. But here's the gearbox. Uh, and I'm just going to drag that into the viewport. And now I dragged it in. You see it doesn't look like it because nothing appeared. That's because it's actually way over here. It's super far away from its pivot for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm going to jump in the transport, transform tab, do edit pivot to set it to the bottom of this. Um, click accept. This is going to take a couple seconds because this is a really big mesh. We're going to deal with that next. Um, this dialog that's waiting for static meshes to be ready. What's this? What this is doing is it's computing nanite data, all sorts of other stuff. Um, and so I'm just going to delete that and drag in a new one over here. We'll jump back to it. Uh, and I'm just going to set a filter down here because I don't really want to see all these materials right now. I'm going to click on this filter dialog, do static mesh. So now I'm only going to see static meshes in the content browser, which is useful because that's all. Because um, I'm going to make some more sort of copies of this gearbox. Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to do is I want to reduce this gearbox. So if we hover down here, we can see uh, it says 16,000 vertices, but that's not right actually. It's got 360,000 nanite vertices. If we go to the inspector tool, we can see the actual number of vertices and triangles. Um, you can see it's got 600,000 and almost 650,000 triangles, 360,000 vertices. That's a lot. You see it's got red everywhere. Those are all border edges. Um, so uh, the first thing we want to do, or what we want to do to you know reduce this is we can go use uh, the simplify tool. So Nanite can handle rendering this no problem, but it is really big and on lower end platforms, you're not going to have Nanite and you're going to end up with 600,000 triangles for this gearbox. Maybe we want to use some pieces of this as just like parts on a table inside of a you know, mechanic shop or something like that. We don't want all those triangles. So we want to reduce this quite a bit. So I'm going to run the simplify tool on it. It's going to do building mesh simplification data. It's going to take a couple seconds. This um, sort of lines pattern means that it's working in the background. Okay, and now it's done. So it's reduced it by 50%. Roughly, it's down to 320,000 triangles. Um, I'm going to turn off this wireframe. Unfortunately, that makes it recompute. Uh, shouldn't, but that's a bug right now. I'll just wait again. Um, and you can see here, you know, it still looks pretty good, but 50%, that's 300,000, that's still way too many. So I'm going to change this to be triangle count. While it's doing this lines, you can change stuff over here. It'll just restart. I'm going to change this down to say 10,000. Let's see what happens then. So now it's going to work away again to try and get to 10,000. See, that looks pretty bad. So things have gone uh, pretty wrong here. Uh, one of the problems, let's turn this, maybe let's say that, let's say that up to 40,000. Whoops. I'm going to fast forward during some of these weights while it does the simplification, just so you're not listening to dead air. As you can see, 
that um, what's happening is it's introducing cracks here around the borders. So that's no good. Um, and that's because, uh, as I showed before, there's these red seam edges uh, where the mesh isn't actually connected. So the, what we're going to do is jump into that mesh ops tab again and do a weld. Um, this will take a couple seconds. So you see it had 75,000 open edges and after the weld it only has 440. So let's do that. And then we can jump back into simplify. And now that I think about it, actually 40,000 isn't too bad for this entire assembly. We're going to break it up into pieces. You could maybe further simplify them afterwards. Now we got a much better sort of shape. There's no cracks and things like that. We're at 40,000 triangles. Uh, some parts still got a little chunky. Uh, we could switch this to maybe normal aware. Uh, we'll try and preserve the surface normals a bit more. So there we go. Uh, that's finished. And you can see some parts got a little bit more accurate. You know, we probably traded something somewhere where some parts got less accurate. I'm going to stop playing with this now, but you could, you know, tweak this until you get triangle counts you're happy with. Um, but I'm just going to accept there. So now the mesh is much smaller, so this rebuild step will be quite a bit faster because it's starting from 40,000 triangles instead of 650,000. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do is I want to break this thing up into pieces because maybe I don't want all these pieces. Maybe I just want some of these gears. Um, so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to use the try select tool. So this is one of the sort of tools you can use um, to basically select triangles. Uh, so you can see the wireframe of the triangles here. I'm going to turn that wireframe off again, though. Uh, it looks pretty bad in video. So I've got this tool has essentially a brush interface. I can make the brush small and I can drag and paint triangles. Uh, and there's buttons over here to do things like clear flood fill. If I do flood fill, it's going to select all those pieces. And there's lots of different brush options, different types of brushes. Um, so I can do all connected and then I don't have to do that flood fill. It'll sort of select all the parts I click on. So if you just want to delete some stuff, like say I just want to get rid of this part over here, I'm just going to click on all the main pieces and click delete. Um, now before I go through and clean that up, I'm just going to mention that this, like the other tools, has accept and cancel buttons. So uh, if I click cancel now, it's going to undo, you know, maybe I'll do some more deleting. Um, it's going to undo everything I've done so far. So if I click cancel, it all comes back, right? So nothing is final until I click accept, including undo and redo. You know, if I'm in here and I delete these things, I can undo that in the tool. Um, and say I do some multiple steps of deleting. Um, but if I, uh, sorry, that wasn't actually multiple steps, was it? So I delete these and then I delete these. And then maybe I change my mind and want to bring those back. But if I accept, now it's all or nothing. So I can, I can bring everything back or I can reapply the entire try select operation. So the way you can work around that is to exit the tool when you've done some operations. Um, but I'm just going to finish deleting this part over here. Basically, I'm going to switch this brush to volumetric. This is good if you got lots of parts. You can make it a little bit bigger. It'll not require you to actually hit everything with the sort of middle of the brush. And then you can do flood fill and delete. Uh, and it'll, you know, get any hidden stuff, things like that. Um, Okay, so I got rid of that part over there. For the rest of the pieces, I'm going to split them into multiple meshes. So this is often a thing if you say import a whole scene and you want to break up the scene into pieces, you can do that with try select also. So what I'm going to do here again, same thing, I'm going to keep that volumetric brush. And I'm just going to do some sort of painting, quick scribbles, and I'm going to do flood fill. See, did I get everything? It kind of looks like it. So now what I can do is I can run this operation separate and what that's going to do is going to make a new asset. So I'm going to change my new asset path to this temp folder that I'm working in so that it appears here and then I'm going to click uh, separate 
and now that's a separate mesh object. So if I click accept now, you can see that now I have two things and I can move this one over here independently. It keeps the pivot that it started with. You can see I missed some bearings there. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but I could go back uh, and fix that. Um, let's jump back into try select and it's a little bit bigger, I guess. And I'll do this one, same thing. Well, this one's got some more pieces back here. Let's get those bearings this time, hopefully. Flood fill. Separate. And accept. So now I've separated the gears, um, but I still have uh, these two pieces connected. So something else you can do uh, another way to, to do this is to go and run the Generate Polygroups tool. Um, so what this tool does is it makes polygroups, which I'm going to cover quite a bit in different videos. Um, but a way that you can use polygroups to do selection is go into poly, Generate Polygroups and switch this to uh, the, the conversion mode to From Connected Triangles. And you see what that does is it basically assigns a polygroup to each part, entire part. So then if I click accept, now I can go to the poly edit tool, polygroup edit on this uh, part. And the polygroups are configured because I just generated them to be per entire part. So I can select these two and that's gonna you know, move those entire parts. Now there's no separate operation in here though, um, but having those polygroups uh, means I can also go into, uh, back into that, uh, try select tool and select all in group as the paint mode and then it will select by group so that's a way to even more quickly select the parts uh, it's similar to all connected I guess in this case uh, I'm just going to delete this one and we're just going to leave those parts at that I'm going to actually just delete this one but you see now basically how to split up a model into pieces now this is a now, if we jump back into Inspector, we can have a look and see there's only 8,000 triangles. It's still a bit heavy. Um, another thing I can do, you know, there's lots of hidden parts in here. If I um, turn on a wireframe, oh, you can't see the hidden parts uh, because we're in, because Nanite wireframe removes the interior. So what, um, but what we could do is uh, go into the jacket tool. So the jacket tool removes hidden inside geometry. So if I run jacket, um, I think if we look here, oh, it does seems to be doing a pretty good job actually. I'm getting a lot of noise from Lumen right now on that mesh. Um, let's just try running jacket and see what happens. So what jacket will do is remove interior triangle. So if we inspect here, we've got around 8,500. If we run jacket, uh, and accept and we go back to inspect uh, now we're down to 8300 so it only found a couple hundred hidden triangles probably in these little cracks and stuff like that um, oh here we go okay you can see that it made a mistake here it removed some stuff that we didn't want it to remove so let's go back into jacket uh, and I'll just show you how to fix that um, um, so I can add triangle samples. Oh, right, I want to change this from winding number to raycast occlusion samples. There we go. Um, now you see it removed a bunch of interior stuff that we probably want to keep. So we can, what we can do is add some random rays, add some triangle samples, and it will fix that up. Um, maybe we need to do a bit more, maybe 50. You can really crank this up. Um, yeah, let's change that to 200 see if that fixes it. It'll take a bit longer now. There we go. So that just does a sort of more accurate solution. Um, so let's accept that. Remember before we had about 8,500 triangles. Now if we jump back to inspector, we're down to 6,600. So we've actually did a pretty good reduction there. Um, there might be a few, still a few small places way on the inside where it removed a triangle. It's technically visible, but uh, depending on how you're going to use this part, that might not matter. Um, Okay, so we've kind of cleaned this part up now. One more thing you might want to do 
um, is the to do with the material. So if we go over here, we see there's a whole bunch of materials uh, assigned to this uh, mesh still that we, you know, I think actually only a few of them are still being used. Some of these are left over because we separated it out from those other parts. And, um, you know, depending on your usage, you might not actually want these materials that it came with. Maybe you just want to assign some like cool metal looking materials. So what you can do uh, to um, clean up the materials, there's various ways, but there's a really quick way. So what we can do is we can go to the create tab, or sorry, the convert or the transform tab, and there's this convert tool. So what I'm going to do is convert this to a dynamic mesh. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do is make a copy first. Um, so I'm just going to drag over a duplicate. So that's just a duplicate of the actor, so it's the same mesh underneath. But that duplicate I made, I'm going to use the convert tool. I'm going to convert it to a dynamic mesh, and I'm going to uncheck this transfer materials. So now it turned gray because it only has one material. Um, and this dynamic mesh didn't make uh, any asset because it's just a sort of mesh in the scene. Dynamic meshes are kind of temporary meshes for editing. We'll talk about them more later. But now I'm going to select that and then shift select my original static mesh and do a transfer operation. I'm going to uncheck transfer materials. Or no, so I'm going to leave it checked because I want to overwrite all the materials over there. So if I do that, now um, my static mesh has been updated to only have sort of one material on it, um, which now I can just go back and delete the dynamic mesh that I made. I don't need that anymore. And I've got my static mesh cleared out. Um, I can reset. Oh, it still had some material assigned to the component. So I can reset that. Uh, and now I could go find like a cool, I don't know, we got metals in here somewhere. Okay, and we're back. It took me a while to find some metal materials. Uh, and uh, I found them though. If I drag them on there, what, what you're going to see is that, if I drag it over here, uh, that in fact it's not working yet. It's only applying to this little spring back here. That's because I forgot uh, a step. So one more thing. If we want to fully clear the materials off of this, um, so we've only got one material listed over here, but the, the underlying mesh thinks it has more materials. Um, this is a, it's a bit complicated to explain, but what we're going to do is use this edit materials tool. And we're basically just going to wipe out all the underlying material assignments. Um, so this is similar to the select tool in that you can click to select things. I'm going to do a select all. Uh, that just selects everything. And I'm going to assign active material. So if there's this drop down active material. There's only, there's only one material. That's material zero. I'm going to click that assign active material. Now when I click accept, uh, and drag my iron material back on, you see now we've got shiny, shiny metal. And that tool is also the tool you can use to assign different materials. So if we go in here, uh, I'll just show you this quick because it's fun. Uh, I can add a second material here. So I could say put iron in the first one, and I don't know, this scratched painted iron in the second one. Uh, now I use my select tool, say select that outside thing. I change this drop down for active material to material one and click that assign active button. Uh, and now you see um, we assigned a different material to that part. Oh, this overrode it over here because we had something else selected or assigned before. So I'm just going to click reset over there. And, oh. My editor got real slow for a second, but it's back now. And you can see that we have those two different materials on there and you get some nice reflections between the outside and inside materials. Uh, okay, so that's the end of this tutorial that we covered all sorts of stuff, you know, uh, simplifying meshes, um, removing hidden parts, welding stuff, uh, you know, using the try select tool to add or to get rid of parts or set, split a mesh up into pieces and doing a tiny bit of material editing. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for watching. Come back for the next video.